Yo, what's up, guys? Today we're gonna be talking about Ruan Me. Fuck. What's up, guys? Today we're gonna be talking about Ruan May. Ru Ruan May. That's who we're talking about. Have you ever looked at a character and went, "Dang, that character would look really good with a semi-visible midriff"? Yeah. Well, Star Rail delivered and keeps delivering. Honestly, a lot of things about anime gacha games piss me off, but I don't really know how to describe Ruan May in any other way than pissing me off. And today I'm gonna go over how to play and build her so you can make her your favorite supporting unit. If you enjoy these types of videos, as always, make sure to like the video so YouTube knows it doesn't suck, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. My name is Braxvone, and let's talk about Ruin Me. Right, Ru Ruin May. Ru God damn. Ruan May sort of sets the standard and breaks the ice for the limited five-star Harmony characters. Get it? Because she's ice and she's a break-focused character. <laughs> I'll see myself out. Ruan May is, in truth, pretty broken. I have no idea how they just let this character release in her current state, because the amount of buffs she gives makes your team basically five characters instead of four. So, let me show you what I'm talking about. Her skill is called String Sing Slow... Sw I, I, did I just have a stroke? It's a three-turn buff that increases all teammates' damage bonus and weakness break efficiency. The damage buff is 32% at talent level 10, and trust me, you'll want to level it to 10. Her weakness break efficiency is 50% and unchanging, and weakness break efficiency is different from break effect. Weakness break efficiency affects the toughness bar that you deplete when you attack. So for example, if you break 30 toughness with a skill, you're actually breaking 45 toughness with 50% break efficiency. This makes breaking enemies significantly easier and gives some extra damage mitigation since they'll be broken more often. And something else that's huge about extending break, and that probably not a lot of people are going to even talk about, is that when enemies have toughness bar, they take 90% of their possible damage. When they're broken, they're taking the full 100%. So longer breaks means you have a bigger damage window, and thus more damage. Your goal is to break enemies, and god I wish she'd break my heart so I could move on. Now that 32% damage bonus isn't the only damage bonus she gives, because with one of her major traces, she gains 6% more damage bonus for every 10% break effect she has over 120%, up to a maximum of 36% damage bonus. So in total, with an optimal Ruan May build at 180% break effect, you get 68% damage bonus on all allies. Chef Hoyoverse was cooking with this one. The muff counts down at the beginning of her turn, and her skill can always be up with you going skill point positive. With that said, a faster run mate isn't always better, since her ultimate lasts two of her own turns, and that can lead to you losing her ult faster in exchange for skill points. Now what does her ultimate do? Well, have you ever wanted to penetrate enemies in Honkai Star Rail? Actually, don't answer that, I've been on Twitter before. Her ultimate deploys a two-turn field that decreases at the start of her turn, and the field gives every character on your team resistance penetration. At level 10, it's 25% penetration, which is absolutely insane. For reference, Locha E6 lowers enemy resistances by 20%, so you're taking a broken E6 of a 5-star and just putting it in a character's base kit. We have a few different ways to lower enemy defense, but we don't have many ways to lower resistance for all types. Giving teammates resistance penetration is essentially the same thing. Now, resistance penetration and lowering enemy resistances is different from lowering their defense. defense Defense is a different stat from the resistances that they have. Ruan Mei doesn't lower defense, but there are other characters that do. And since defense and resistance are different stats, they both get a ton of value individually, and when you stack them together, enemies will take more damage than Ting Yun. Not only that, but when the field is up and you hit an enemy, they get a flower above their head that makes it so that when enemies recover from having their weakness broken, she breaks their kneecaps. Enemies get an additional delay after breaking free, buying you more time and dishing out some more break damage from Ruan Mei. This character sounds pretty crazy, right? Yeah, well, we're only halfway through her kit because for some reason they wanted to make her kit longer than a Yu-Gi-Oh card in 2023. I skipped biology in high school, so I don't want to try and pronounce this, but basically Ruan Mei gives your three non-Ruan Mei teammates 10% speed for free. Like, literally, her existence just makes everyone move faster. Maybe she's just really scary. Her talent also makes it so that when enemies have their weakness broken, she deals break damage, too. And on top of her talent that gives you free speed, one of her traces gives allies, including herself, 20% break effect, and her other trace gives her a free 5 energy at the start of every turn. Ruan Mei is a charity for both your team and for horny people. Her technique is pretty useful as well, because it's gonna make it so when you enter battle, it'll trigger her skill without using a skill point right away. But it's even more useful in Simulated Universe, where all types from allies will break enemy toughness upon entering battle with an attack from the outside. The amount of toughness you reduce depends on the amount of blessings that you have, and the more blessings that you have, the more toughness you're going to reduce and the more enemies you're going to break. The break is going to be based off of Ruan Mei's break damage. If you're going to farm simulated universe, this character is massively helpful. Where she really shines is in AoE content where you can have tons of breaks and specific team compositions with multiple damage dealers. And I'll show you what I mean in the team section, but overall she's definitely one of the most consistently strong supports across the board, and a ton of fun to play. For talent priority, I would 
I'd recommend ultimate and skill first since the difference with her talent is only 2% speed. It's worth it, but it won't make that much of a difference at first. So I sort of have a hoarding problem. Whenever I buy a product, I always keep the packaging just in case I have to make a return or sell it. And that's led to me keeping boxes on boxes from tons of years ago. Yes, I do need the box for my Pokewalker because what if I find it one day and I want to sell it online or something? Well, this extends beyond boxes too because I also do it in Gacha games. And I hope you're all relic orders like me because there's one set that I'm going to mention that nobody has used until now. But first, I'm going to talk about Four Piece Messenger of Hackerspace, which is my preferred set on Ruan Mei. Since you usually won't speed tune as specifically in her teams, and the overall increase in speed is helpful. But with that said, many players will struggle to reach the break effect threshold of 180% to get her max damage bonus. So if you struggle with that, you can either run 4-piece or 2-piece Thief of Shooting Meteor for break effect bonus, or you could break open your wallet. The third option is to just not care about sets, and it's what I recommend if you're struggling to hit 180%. Ultimately, Ruan Mei's personal damage on basic attack doesn't really matter, and her speed is somewhat high by default. So you can just focus on any set piece with high break effect substats. As for planar ornaments, most of the time you're going to want to run Talia for some more break effect and thus damage bonus, Penagoni for damage bonus and energy regen, Broken Keel for team crit damage, or Fleet for team attack. If you're playing a preservation unit that prevents Ruan Mei from taking hits and thus generating energy, or if you're playing an ice DPS, you want to go with Penagoni to guarantee that you can ultimate every three turns. The most important thing is to have a 5 star energy regen robe and speed boots with break effect substats. Ruan Mei doesn't actually need to be insanely fast, you just want to make her close to your main damage dealer's speed. She does want 180% break effect though, just to get the maximum damage bonus for your team, which means you'll need to get break substats. And if you have good break substats on a bunch of random pieces, that's totally fine. You just want to hit 180 break effect by any means necessary, except by giving up your speed boots. And there's a light cone that kind of changes the situation on the energy regen rope, but I'll talk about that in a minute. For her body and sphere pieces, it just really does not matter what stats you give her, as long as they have break effect substats. So here's a summary of her best sets and stats. The only thing to make sure you do is put on speed boots and an ER rope. Speed boots will get her to 134 speed by default due to her base speed and traces, which is why you don't have to worry about those substats. And if you can't get 180% break effect on a set, just throw any random set pieces together to get to 180 or as close as possible. For substats, aim for break effect, and then you can worry about effect res just so that way she doesn't get stunned. If you're having a really rough time with break effect substats, but you're playing her with the meshing cogs light cone, you can also play a break effect rope. So this is probably going to be the easiest light cone choice of your life. Unless you wail, because then for some reason your life and your choices get harder. I don't feel like that's how it should work, but it does with this character. Ruan Mei's light cone is really, really stupid. It's like adding another character to your team. 10 energy per wave isn't a huge deal. Even in pure fiction, you only have three waves at a time. But what's insane about it is that it's a 24% damage increase for three turns whenever you use the holder's ultimate. And if the user has 150% or more break effect, which your Ruan Mei should, you'll get a skill point back. And if you're using this light cone, Ruan Mei can give a 92% total damage bonus at a time when counting the rest of her kit, which results in such high damage that not even flex tape can save your enemies. But the main problem with her light cone is that you can't reliably three turn ultimate with it, meaning you won't have nearly 100% uptime on the light cone's effect, and you'll have less time with the resistance penetration from her ultimate. Bringing her light cone to a fight is like bringing a plane to a knife fight. Like, yeah, you'll win, but so will Bush in the following election. That's to say, while her signature light cone is fucking broken, there are free to play light cones that are easy to access and can add more value in some situations just due to her getting more ultimate uptime. Those two light cones are Memories of the Past, which I would argue is her true best in slot light cone, since it gives 8 energy on her basic attack at S5 and also has a very high break effect stat, and Meshing Cogs, which has the same energy effect at S5 but doesn't have the break effect. But it's a 3 star light cone, so everyone has it and has access to it. If you don't have her signature or Memories of the Past at at least S3, you're probably going to want to go with Meshing Cogs S5 just so that we can get the 3 turn ultimate. Also, the energy from these light cones is affected by energy regen stat as well. At the end of the day, you can spend poles on what you want to, but I had similar success with Ruan Mei on Memories of the Past S5 compared to her signature, despite it being crazy good as a light cone. And with that said, just due to how many enemies are in pure fiction, you can probably still 3 turn ult there with her light cone. It just won't work in Memory of Chaos. If you don't have Memories of the Past, her signature light cone could be a pretty good pull. But for free-to-play players, you do have Meshing Cogs as a super solid option anyways. All of the other Harmony light cones don't even come close to these for their value they can bring to Ruan Mei, so I wouldn't bother with anything else. Next up, I'll give you guys some team building tips, and hopefully they'll help you make the most of your Ruan Mei.
I wish she'd hold me like she holds her instrument. Ronmei is a very interesting character. She does things in a bit of a different way from all of the other characters that we have, with the exception of Asta, because Asta also increases your whole team's attack and your whole team's speed with her ult. Ronmei's abilities all work on all of your characters on your team, except for herself with the speed buff, but you know, we don't talk about that. And because of that, she actually enables a different kind of composition that we're not super used to seeing in high level play. So today I wanna show you guys some of those compositions and then also some just standard compositions that you can run with her as a regular support it. These aren't in any particular order or ranking, these are just some teams that I had fun with, so let's get started. This one's called More Jingun Buffs and Caked Up Warp Trotter. Tobaz and Numbi's release already made Jingun a better unit, that combined with the follow-up attack relics if you wanted to run two-piece, two-piece. Basically, he's had some new opportunities to do more damage, and Topaz and Numbi are also characters that are supports, but also deal a ton of damage as hunt characters in single target. Topaz is a very basic attack heavy unit, you don't necessarily have to use her skills, and as a result of that, Jingun can basically always use his skill. Ronmei is an SP positive character, Hoho is an SP negative character, Character, but uh, I mean that only that depends on how often you use her healing because she can actually be an SP positive character if you don't need her healing immediately. So all in all, you shouldn't really have skill point issues with this team. And Ron Mei is going to buff the damage of Topaz and the damage of Jingyuan, which is going to effectively make your two DPS that you have on this team even stronger. And then Ho Ho also has the attack buffs that you're missing because Ron Mei is buffing your damage and also giving you resistance penetration, but you don't really have attack buffs, so Ho Ho is going to also help you with that as well. This is one of my favorite teams that I've run with Ron Mei, not necessarily because it's the strongest team, but just because it's a team that I've found that I can really enjoy. I didn't play a ton of Topaz and Jingyuan until I had Ruan Mei, and now they just feel so much better to play. So speaking of the dual DPS team, now we can run Blade and Jinglu together with even more buffs than before. Blade and Jinglu was actually a combo that has been accessible for a while, but there was only one Bronya. We did have Pela, which could lower everyone's defense, which is super nice, but Ruan Mei's buffs are a little bit stronger than Pela's in most scenarios. Uh, obviously, there's, there's situations where that might not be true, but Ruan Mei giving you up to 68% damage bonus, 25% resistance penetration, and some speed on top of that and also better break efficiency and all that stuff. Obviously, this, she's going to be an amazing buffer for both Jinglu and Blade. The damage bonus of both these characters is going to be insane. Jinglu gets a ton of attack on her own, so attack buffs never did too much for her. They did help her, like, obviously attack buffs are good, more attack is always going to be good, but what she really wanted was some more damage buffs and some more crit buffs. And Ronmei doesn't have the crit buffs, but she does have the damage buffs. And Blade also is HP scaling, so he actually can use damage buffs a lot better than attack buffs as well, and we have a lot of attack buffers. But the reason you would play Bronya with Blade is because she had a damage buff, and Ron May has damage buffs, so obviously she's good with Blade as well. You shouldn't have any SP problems with this at all. In fact, you might be overloaded on SP here. You can actually play any healer you want instead of Locha here, and it should be fine as long as they're not skilling every single turn. I'm just showing you sort of the Ant one, which is Locha because Locha's busted. You can also play Ho Ho here. Now, this team is like kind of a dual DPS team, but not like as much. Pure Fiction is a game mode where Erudition excel, and Argenti is one of the few characters that can actually decimate Pure Fiction in a giga fast manner. So if you're going into Pure Fiction and you have a lot of enemies that are weak to physical, I recommend Argenti and Clara. Ronmei can buff both Clara and Argenti, and any hits that you end up taking on Clara are also going to be giga buffed by Ronmei, and then also Ho Ho as well. Clara, you basically never have to use her skill. You can use her skill, and it can be very strong, but you don't have to. Meanwhile, Argenti wants to use his skill all the time. You can swap out Clara for another character if you wanted to, like Blade. I'm just trying to showcase some different ways you can play different characters. So now onto the single DPS team comps. Jinglu is going to be one of the characters that benefits from Ronmei the most. If you play Pela and Ronmei both with Penaconi. You can get 20% damage bonus onto Jinglu, and then on top of Ruin Mei's normal damage bonus, you're gonna have up to an 88% damage bonus on Jinglu, which is gonna be absolutely freaking crazy. And also, she's my wife, so I'm giving her more screen time. Again, the healer is just for show. You can play a lot of different characters with this. In fact, you can play a really SP heavy healer if you wanted to, an SP negative healer. Because Pela barely uses her skill, Ruin Mei barely uses her skill. Actually, she's really SP positive. Pela's really SP positive. Jinglu is not super SP heavy, so you can definitely use an SP heavy healer. And then lastly, I wanted to show one with Ruin Mei and Bron. In the last team that I showed with Pela, some people might be wondering if Bronya is going to be better here. And honestly, it's up in the air. Depends on the content, depends on your build. The amount of damage bonus you're going to get from running Ruan Mei and Bronya together is going to be pretty freaking crazy. And honestly, you can benefit a lot from defense shred. But if you want to, hypothetically, you could play Bronya and Blade together. You could play Bronya on Penacony for the 10% damage bonus, then also the 68% damage bonus from Ruan Mei. You're going to have a ton of damage bonus on Blade. It'll be super helpful. And then also Bronya is going to help Blade move, hurt himself more, etc. That's also part of the point of this team where every single time Jinglu attacks, Blade's HP is going to get lowered, which is going to help him do more follow-up attacks, and that's part of the reason that team is so strong. This team is functionally similar, where you're going to get more attacks with Blade from Bronya, which means you're going to lower your HP even more. And then obviously, Locha is just there because, you know, Locha is one of the better characters in the game, but you could replace him with any preservation or abundance character, and that would be fine because Blade is completely self-sustaining. 
One combo we probably won't see a lot right now, but may see a lot in the future when Dr. Ratio releases is Welt and Ruan Mei. Welt and Ruan Mei work really well together because when Welt is able to break enemies or when you just get imaginary break in general, enemies get imprisoned and Ruan Mei can extend that, essentially making it so you can run Welt as a solo preservation. Now, the problem with this is that Welt's ultimate ability doesn't technically count as a weakness break, it's just imprisonment. However, when Ruan Mei actually activates her ice break afterwards, you have the opportunity to imprison them again before they recover and deal some damage to you. This means that if you break them with imaginary and also have Welt's ultimate ready, you essentially have ways to not take damage between Welt and Ruan Mei and then your imaginary carry. The reason I didn't volunteer Don Hung Il for this is because Welt takes a lot of skill points if you want to really make sure you can loop his ultimate, but the other way to play Welt is to just spam his basic attack and make him really, really fast. Now, I'm not talking about 134 speed. I'm talking about like 151 plus, 170, 200, 5,000, a billion. Give him as many speed points as you possibly can because that will make it so we can get his ult back consistently while using his basic attack and hopefully not eat all your skill points. So that way you could actually play him with Dunhung. But yeah, I anticipate with Dr. Ratio, Ruan Mei, and Welt together, especially because Ratio works with debuffs and Welt has a bunch of debuffs, you should be able to prevent enemies from attacking you for basically the whole fight. One or two attacks might slip through, but as long as they're not all on the same person, this synergy will work really, really well. One last thing that I didn't really go over is the possibility for Kafka teams to be buffed. Now, I haven't seen Math actually run on this, and honestly, I don't play a lot of Kafka teams typically, so I don't think I'm the best person to consult on this. But with Runmay giving damage bonus and resistance penetration, it will mathematically buff dot characters, including Kafka and Gwenaifen. Now, you might be wondering why I picked Gwenaifen. It's because I'm in love with her. Now, one thing I did want to talk about was... Um, fuck, how do you say her name? I feel like her name is, is Juyi? Ju, Ju, I'm gonna call her Twitter. Playing Twitter and Ruan Mei together is a bit of an interesting functionality. Basically, Ruan Mei extends break and does extra break damage, and Twitter is able to break anyone with any weakness, regardless of whether they're quantum or not, that's just with her ultimate. And the more you can break enemies, the more stacks towards her follow-up attack she can get. But the problem with Twitter and Ruan Mei is that Twitter's damage is not super stellar on its own. It's all right, it's, you know, it's pretty good. But part of her strength comes from being able to break anyone of any weakness, and what that usually means is that when you break with her, a lot of her damage comes from that break, from that quantum. Well, Ruan Mei extending that means that they're not going to get their toughness bars back as fast, which means that her ultimate's not going to really get any value if you shoot it at someone that's already broken, because it was extended by Ruan Mei, which means that in a way, she's sort of anti-synergistic, even though her entire kit focuses on break and break effect. But she also has a weird synergy where if your entire point is to try to keep them from attacking, she can also work. One thing I'm experimenting on with Twitter here is running her to dual DPS comp with no healer or preservation and the concept of keeping everyone broken forever. But I don't anticipate that it's going to go very well. We may need some more units for that. All in all, Ruan Mei can really just be slotted anywhere. Most places that Branya can be played, Ruan Mei can also be played, except Ruan Mei is an SP positive version of that. She's a very powerful character and can fit into basically every team, but I did want to showcase some of the stronger teams that I tried out. And again, just to reiterate, any of the, the healing characters that you saw can be replaced with basic basically any other healers, except in teams where they are very SP negative and you need a fast Lulcha to just never use the skill button on. Next up, let's talk uh, about whale shit. Let, let's, let's talk about the poop that comes out of, uh, never mind, cut that out. Okay, so let's talk about these Eidolons because holy shit. Her E1 makes it so that when her ultimate is up, your team ignores 20% of defense. What the fuck? As if Ron May didn't give you the highest damage bonus in the game, speed buffs, break buffs, and the ability to ignore resistances, they gave her defense ignore with E1. At this point, I'm pretty sure Ron May buffs everything in the game except for attack. Are you kidding me? E2 makes it so that all allies get a 40% attack buff when hitting enemies with their weakness broken. And let me tell you, as someone that's played Ruan Mei, it's not hard to keep their weakness broken. Get whoever cooked this on Master Chef as soon as possible. E3 is an ultimate and talent level up, which is nice for the resistance penetration and speed. E4 is a break effect buff for Ruan Mei, so just a bit of a damage increase for her. I wouldn't rely on this for her damage buff, though. E5 is a skill and basic level up, and E6 extends her ultimate field duration by one turn, making it last three turns and letting you have 100% uptime on it if you run three turn ultimate, with meshing cogs or memories of the past. It also increases her talent's break multiplier by a big margin, which makes her personal damage contribution a lot better. I want to make it clear, I'm a little biased because I only like shilling light cones that work super well on every single character in that category, or most characters in that category. And at the moment, Ruan Mei is the only one who can take advantage of the whole effect, at least most of the time. Every character can activate the damage bonus, but there's other harmony light cones that are extremely hard to contend with. For example, Planetary Rendezvous at S5 gives the same damage bonus as 
run maze and doesn't require an ultimate, just in exchange for the wielder being the same type as your DPS. On Branya, you'd play But the Battle Isn't Over or Past and Fissure. And on most harmonies, Dance 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 is pretty broken. There's a lot of other broken light cones as well. The bar is so high for light cones in the harmony section that for characters that aren't Ruan Mei, 24% damage bonus is like the bare minimum. And with all of that considered, Ruan Mei can get a three turn ultimate loop and a ton of break effect with memories of the past. So getting our light cone almost feels like a trap when E1 and E2 are so strong. With that said though, if you don't have memories of the past at at least S3 or higher, her signature light cone can be a solid way to gain some more damage even with less ultimate uptime. So if I were deciding between her signature light cone and E1, I would check to see if I have an S3 memories of the past. And if I don't have at least that, I might go for her light cone over Eidolons. But if I had S3 memories of the past, I'd probably go for E1 since you're basically just running a mini four piece quantum set that works against any enemy in addition to all of her other buffs. E2 is also crazy since enemies stay broken for a really long time, but you know, going all the way to E2 is rough. Remember not to swipe on this game though, it's more fun with the challenge in my opinion. Let me know which upcoming character you're the most excited for, what your favorite team is, or what the best kind of ramen is. I usually have tonkatsu, that one's really good, but I need to branch out because I'm, I'm really, I'm really white.